Tonight on Parish Profiles, we'll visit a North Fresno church that's equipping parishioners to provide Christ-centered care to those who are hurting. Then, we'll travel up Highway 99 to see how a Merced parish is embracing social media to engage members and to spread the good news. Located on the northern boundary of Fresno near the San Joaquin River, Holy Spirit is one of the newer churches in the diocese. As we learn from an enlightening conversation with Stewardship Director Jennifer Huerta, parishioners here are heavily invested in the value of stewardship. I'm very surprised to hear that we're the newest parish in Fresno because we were established in 1981. Um, our founding pastor, Monsignor James Logan, he put incredible effort and work along with all of our parishioners to build a beautiful chapel that we're sitting in here today. So 4,000 registered families now, it's quite impressive. Thank you. <laughs> Holy Spirit places a major priority, a commitment, a value on stewardship. How does that play out? How does it look? How does it feel at your parish? We define stewardship the same way that the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops do. It's the giving of what God has given to you back out in the world to Him. Um, at Holy Spirit, it's most easily identified as the giving of our time, talent, and treasure, but that's so much deeper than so many people uh, might, might normally think of it. It's not just an offertory donation or getting involved in a ministry. It's really about uh, discerning and looking deep into what our Lord wants from you. So Jennifer, day in and day out, when push comes to shove, what is this stewardship? How does it, how does it play? In general, we like to encourage and support our parishioners to constantly discern where it is God's calling them. Um, the most obvious way most people might identify a way God's calling them is to serve in a ministry, to give of the talents or unique gifts that they've been given in that way. And we have more than three dozen ministries for someone to be able to get involved here at Holy Spirit. But it's not just that. Uh, after discerning, you might think, am I really giving the time that God wants from me? You know, I might sit here one hour during the sacred liturgy, or I might have a little bit of personal prayer time here and there, but maybe he's really calling me to spend more time with him in our Blessed Sacrament Chapel in adoration, or to get involved in the prayer chain to pray more for our fellow parishioners. Uh, our parish works to encourage people to discern this regularly, and not just at certain times of the year or um, infrequently. We want them to constantly be seeking whatever God's will is for them. How do you keep this energy up? How do you keep this stewardship burning? How do you keep it fresh? Like so many of us need an annual retreat or, or renewal, our parish has an annual stewardship renewal every fall. Um, it has a mix of a ministry fair out in our plaza, of lay witnesses, just fellow parishioners like you or I, giving a testimony here during Mass. Um, and we pick a theme, something to embrace, to uh, offer our parishioners that extra incentive to really dig deep to discern, am I giving everything I should in the offertory, or not just here, am I making sure everything that I spend, all of my money, is doing God's will out there in the world? Am I really uh, participating in the ministries that I uh, should be, or am I going through the motions? And am I giving of the time that God's asked me to in my work, in my family, at school, all of these other places that certainly have a demand on our time? but um, we don't want people to just go through the motions. We're each called to play a unique role here in the world, and we want, as a parish, to support our parishioners' efforts to play that unique role. That's a good point. How is it that the parish facilitates or promotes this great um, desire that people become stewards? 
Besides the annual renewal, we want to check in with our parishioners regularly for the sake of stewardship and just sort of uh, uh, be updated with all the new technology that's out there. We're on social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And through these social media, we like to stay connected to our parishioners, to engage with them, to offer them resources and other uh, items that encourage them on their walk. Uh, we also have a Flocknote site. Flocknote's kind of a unique um, website of sorts that allows you to stay connected to the ministries you care about most so you don't miss information from the specific uh, ministry you might either be involved with or maybe even just thinking about being involved with. Um, you wouldn't miss any information from them. It's really unique. We, 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 we've come to really enjoy Flocknote. It's growing quite quickly. This would be flock like uh, shepherding. Flock like shepherding the sheep, exactly. Awesome, I never heard, this is good. Mm -hmm. Finally, one question, Jennifer, from the Holy Spirit must play some sort of role in all this. Uh, what's her part? The Holy Spirit being our patron here at the parish um, is, is who we continually seek guidance from. You know, we ask our Lord, it, you know, is our parish moving in the right direction? Our pastor, Father Eric Swearingen, is always discerning and, and bringing to the staff and other involved uh, parishioners here, uh, are we moving in the right direction? Here's where I feel the Spirit's calling us. And he's particularly linked stewardship as part of the way we're going to get our parishioners moving along on that journey towards heaven. And uh, we're, we're really proud of where we're headed when it comes to stewardship. And uh, we, we hope other parishes in the diocese take it on as well. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing so much about your parish. Thank you. At Holy Spirit, stewardship extends to care for others. Hazel Bondi heads up the Stephen Ministry Project, which trains lay parishioners to provide high quality, one-to-one -one care to those dealing with difficult life struggles. Hazel, what is the heart or the core of the St. Stephen Ministries? Well, Stephen Ministry are trained caring, loving people, giving uh, compassionate um, support to those going through a difficult time in life, um, just as Christ asked us to do, um, to love one another and to bear each other's burdens. What kind of burdens might these be? It could be, uh, it could be just about anything, but um, what comes to mind is um, uh, death of a loved one, um, job loss, divorce, uh, terminal illness, and it could be something such as loneliness. Why is this named the St. Stephen Ministries? We think of St. Stephen as being the first martyr, but um, lesser known is the fact that he was the first documented person to uh, do good works, such as two widows, uh, which we do take care of widows. How did this program, which is all over the country actually, how did it make its way to Holy Spirit? Well, Father Eric and the Parish Council actually came to, uh, came to us and asked us if we could establish a bereavement program. And with some research, we found a Stephen Ministry, a well put together program in place that uh, we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. And uh, we were able to um, uh, establish um, Stephen Ministry here at Holy Spirit. That was seven years ago. And um, uh, it's uh, 50 hours of training that uh, we give to, uh, to the candidates. And um, uh, then they are able to uh, become Stephen Ministers. Where do the ministers come from? Where do your persons needing the care come from? How are they matched off? First of all, generally they come through Holy Spirit Church, either Father Eric or the parish office. Um, sometimes by word of mouth, uh, uh, they hear about us. And um, how they're matched, uh, generally I will get a call, um, either from one of them or from the parish office, and I will talk to them over the phone or I might even visit with them. And then I, um, I look to the available Stephen ministers that we have and um, match them up according to uh, uh, what the issue is and uh, sometimes a little bit regarding age and of course it's always um, gender to gender. 
Now, you're a nurse, so I'm supposing that helps. But what kind of training did you ever receive, and what kind of training do the Stephen ministers receive, Hazel? Uh, the, the training we receive is uh, originally five of us were sent by Holy Spirit for a one-week uh, training program, leadership and um, train the trainer type program. And we came back then armed with the knowledge and materials to put on a training program, put on 50 hours of training, those that are interested uh, to become Stephen ministers. What does that training entail? Like, what are some of the skills you may hone on? It's all broken down into modules, and we have modules on feelings, we have mo modules on compassion, we have a module on um, uh, listening. That's uh, a, a very key skill that's needed, and um, uh, setting boundaries, um, process versus results. And when I say process versus results, uh, we help people go through the process of grieving or whatever it is, um, but only God can produce the results. What response has there been at your parish and also with others involved in your program here? Well, we started out with our first class with 12 people. We've done six classes, in, or we're on our sixth class. Um, we now have 32 trained ministers, and that's still not enough. Um, we still need more. We I just have a class going now, so we're training 20 more people. That's going to give us over 50 people. And by the way, that's not just Holy Spirit. Uh, one of our leaders is from St. Paul Newman Center. That's Paul, huh? Uh, that's oh, Bruce. 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 And uh, so he, too, has not only recruited um, ministers, people to become ministers, but also uh, some of the people that we have served, a few uh, are from St. Paul. And with this new class, um, we also have some people from St. Anthony's. So they're all going to go into one big pool. We'll all be one big happy family, and uh, we'll be serving um, all parishes, and we don't turn anyone away. We have even served non-Catholics. Final thought in conclusion, Hazel, um, what are your best hopes and dreams for Stephen Ministry? Well, I think if we can keep going the way we are, we've been pretty successful so far. Um, just uh, continue to, to uh, serve the people of this community and uh, bring Christ's love to them. Up next on Parish Profiles, we're headed to St. Patrick's Parish in Merced, where technology is allowing connections made on Sundays to continue all week long.